Hello at Jam and Thrive Kids and Parents. Thanks for joining me today. It is day 26 of the Red Letter Challenge for Kids that we've been walking through together. And today is the last day that we get to focus on serving others. So our reading for today is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, if you want to look that up in your own Bibles. It says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So have you guys ever heard of someone called the Lady with the Lamp? No, I hadn't either, but it's an awesome story. It was the nickname given to Florence Nightingale, which was the most famous nurse in history. She became known as the Lady with the Lamp during the Crimean War, when she would go from injured soldier to injured, so injured soldier at night, and she would comfort them while carrying the small lamp. This is the picture that Christ paints when he tells us to let your light shine before others. Florence said that God spoke to her and called her into this service, but he calls all of us into service of some sort. He calls all of us to carry the light of God to a hurting world, like nurses on a battlefield. Isn't that really cool? And he gives us gifts so that we can serve other people. You see, before Jesus came, people believed they had to be good before they could get the approval of a king or one of their many gods. They believed they had to create light on their own, somehow, some way. They had to earn the love of their king or of their gods. But Jesus flipped it around, right? He does that all the time. He loves us first so that we can love others. We take his light to a dark world, not our light, right? We have Jesus' light to carry with us. This is love, not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And that's from 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. When Jesus says, you are the light of the world, he meant that we are like a mirror. We are reflecting light and love to other people. But where does the love and light actually come from? It comes from God. He, we can only love because he loved us first. It's such an amazing gift. We receive his love and we can give it to other people. So here's the entire passage from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. And I'd love for you to read along with me if you can. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It can't, right? But it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So did you notice the verses in Matthew didn't just call us to be the light of the world? Jesus also calls us to be salt. Why would he want us to be salt? That sounds kind of weird, right? To understand why we are like salt, Timothy Keller, a pastor in New York, says to think about one of the most popular summer foods at an outdoor picnic on the 4th of July. What do you think it is? Hmm. Well, it's corn on the cob, right? Everyone loves corn on the cob during the summer. But what makes corn on the cob so yummy is the salt that you put on it before you eat it. Now, have you ever been eaten, eaten corn on the cob or scrambled eggs or french fries without salt? It doesn't taste very good, or it definitely doesn't taste as good as it does with salt, right? But nobody ever eats french fries or corn on the cob and says, wow, I just loved that salt. They don't say that, right? Instead, they say, I loved that corn on the cob or I loved those fries. The job of the salt is to make the food taste better. When Jesus calls us to be salt, he means our job is to add flavor to life and draw people's attention to Jesus, not to ourselves. Just as salt draws attention to the food it's on, we point people to Jesus. And we do that best when we serve other people. So sprinkle acts of service, both big and small, all around you, everywhere you go. But remember, we don't show kindness to look good or to earn God's approval but to show how good our God is and to point other people to a real relationship with Jesus Christ. It's amazing to think that through what we do and the way we live, we can point people to God, right? It's an amazing privilege that we have together. So here's your challenge for today. I want you to make a label for your salt shaker, 
I know, kind of weird, right? And on that label, I want you to put the verse from Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, that says, you are the salt of the earth. Put that on your salt shaker and help it be a reminder for this verse, right? That you are called to be the salt of the earth, to point other people to Jesus. And once you have that label on your salt shaker, I want you to keep trying to memorize this verse, that you are the salt of the earth. And then you guys can pass that salt shaker around and talk about what do we mean to serve as a family together? How can you serve other people this week? How can you use the gifts that God has given you to point other people to Jesus? All right, let's end this time with a word of prayer. Fold your hands, bow your heads, and we'll pray together. You can repeat after me. Dear God, help us to be the light of the world. Help us to use good works to point others to you. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining me to learn a little bit more about Jesus today. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.